Latency. Uh, today I want to speak about latency and uh, all kinds of it. Uh, this is the presentation that took about three weeks to prepare for some reasons. Um, but it's finally here. And uh, this is, uh, since it's my presentation, there should be my cat uh, here. And this is probably the moment when the motherboard uh, got broken. Uh, or I, I don't blame him, as it was probably me. Um, so basically the main, the main idea is we are all explorers and things breakers. And my intent is to, is to give knowledge, uh, uh, very fundamental knowledge uh, to explore things, uh, to derive uh, high level things from low level stuff. And eventually, Sometimes uh, you can break it. Uh, this is normal. That's process of learning. If you fail, you learn. Uh, if you don't fail, you didn't uh, start even learning. <clears throat> so the latency. Um, this is a perfect illustration of latency. Uh, it's well known uh, in gaming world. Uh, it's uh, on the uh, right side, you, you can see Stadia. It's like gaming in the cloud. So it's like it's um, when you game a game on a computer, which is placed somewhere in Google. And even if it's uh, very close to you, it doesn't work properly. So you can see he tops, he wants to jump, and the player jumps in one second later. Uh, and the soccer, um, you all know it, how it happens. Uh, they don't react immediately. They think about lawyer. Uh, I think lo lo lawsuits <laughs> about damage uh, and so on. So they play. Uh, so why we speak? Um, because the latency is quite a fundamental thing. And um, obviously, it makes things slow. Uh, it makes um, uh, websites, uh, video games, uh, uh, web services unresponsive. Um, or, for instance, a website can be uh, uh, can get problems with rendering. Uh, um, <clears throat> Uh, latency can lead to underutilization and waste of resources. So this means um, if you uh, if you have two services placed uh, very far away from each other, and one service is uh, querying the second one, and it's wasting time on waiting for the the second service uh, to respond, and if it's That's, uh, if you hear it, it's a uh, noise of toys for my cat. Um, <laughs> and so while the first service uh, waiting for the second one, it wastes time, obviously. And if you don't, uh, if you don't place them close, uh, you will continue wasting time. And even if you have very far away, uh, services placed uh, very far away, uh, you still can do uh, uh, some parallelization concurrency to uh, to better utilize wasting time. So you can issue more queries, but at the same time, uh, you can overload the the second service. So there is always should be balance and uh, good design decision. Um, latency can be caused by log contention. That's very quite similar to what I described, but log contention is more about um, uh, parallel uh, synchronization within one process. When one thread is waiting for the second thread, um, this is something we see in uh, Prism. Uh, it's uh, Ethereum to a client. I suspect it's that's what we see uh, because it doesn't scale vertically. and it doesn't show any spikes on CPU usage, on memory usage. So multiple parallel 
uh, queries, they they basically stock and wait each other. And probably uh, one thread which is working with peer-to-peer -peer layer is, is blocked on network request. And the second one that serves um, the um, um, and the second one that serves um, API queries um, it waits for this for the access uh, to the database that's held by this, the first thread, and um, that's where the lock condition comes in place. Um, so if you scale vertically, like more CPU, uh, more uh, gigahertz, terahertz. <laughs> whatever, it doesn't help. Uh, and obviously latency is annoying, uh, doesn't help uh, mental health. Uh, so this is a formal definition. Uh, basically, uh, it's, uh, it's taken from uh, Wikipedia. Uh, I recommend to read Wikipedia uh, article on latency. It covers a lot of points, but basically uh, uh, if we abstract uh, latency is, from a general point of view, is the time delay between the cause and the effect of the of some physical change in the system being observed, known as lag in a gaming community. So you press button, the action happens some day later. Uh, sometimes it happens not in only gaming communities. <laughs> even happens in management uh, and so on. Um, but uh, yeah, what latency can be managed and not. So I want to I want to separate, I want to divide all kinds of latency to manageable and non-manageable. Uh, this is because we uh, mostly program in TypeScript uh, and uh, Golang. Uh, those are languages with garbage, garbage collection and with a very specific uh, compiling, inter interpreting uh, procedures. So you don't have control over the CPU instructions. You don't have uh, alignment, uh, memory uh, control, and so on. So I will start from the uh, non-manageable <clears throat> to cover it quickly. Um, Yes, uh, this is uh, something I already mentioned. Memory, uh, most of languages uh, abstract memory with GC. Uh, can change memory layout. This is what I managed. You can control it. And you cannot, um, since you don't have any, uh, uh, you don't have any control over uh, memory layout and uh, also CPU instructions, you cannot optimize uh, cache usage, for instance. Uh, like write code which would fit 16 bytes uh, because 16 bytes is a unit of um, memory. Uh, I think that's how we can call it. That is transferred between CPU and memory over the bus. And uh, there are a lot of specifics in it. Um, yeah, and CPU, that's what I actually already uh, mentioned uh, manageable <clears throat> what we what we can do we can uh, uh, we can grow uh, megahertz uh, gigahertz of uh, cpu we can give it more gigabytes of ram uh, and we can install uh, hdd sdd and two storages um, <clears throat> to scale vertically but we need to know that we need to remember it doesn't always help um, um, we can also improve the bandwidth uh, between RAM and between um, between uh, network uh, RAM. I mean, um, to have a lower latency. So if you know the technical parameters, uh, every RAM uh, unit has uh, latency numbers. And this also has a speed and this combination. The, um, defines bandwidth, how many bytes can go through the bus <clears throat> and the network. It's basically a, um, a better channel. Like a um, long, long time ago, there was uh, like 56 kilobit modems. Uh, 
there were good times. Um, um, we had like 10 megabit, 10, 10 megabits LAM, uh, local networks. Um, now we have uh, mostly always uh, one gigabit and we are some kind of switching to 10 gigabit. Um, so this is what I mean by this. Um, and also we can place things closer. Um, Yes, and we can, we can, so when we have uh, input IO operations, uh, input output operations uh, that work with uh, external devices like uh, network and uh, disk, uh, we can budge these uh, network operations, uh, these IO operations. So for instance, I will tell how the um, schedule uh, for HDD works uh, and it works in um, it schedules read queries this uh, the way that it wouldn't make uh, the travel of the head that travels on the uh, on the disks it, it minimizes the travel uh, of this uh, of this head it it doesn't go like randomly it tries to optimize the the path. Um, yeah, something similar happens you know, with the network. There are BGP thing, and uh, it doesn't mean that if you uh, if you want to open a website that is placed on uh, in Toronto from San Francisco, the packets shouldn't go through China, for instance. Um, that would be weird, but it happens sometimes. <laughs> and there is also BGP attacks. Uh, it's when um, some governments uh, decide to sneak and they change um, by mistake uh, BGP rules and the traffic goes uh, through them. Uh, this happens. <clears throat> um, algorithms, uh, it's a very fundamental thing. Uh, we can apply better algorithms with better complexity and uh, with a better uh, resources consumption. Um, uh, the better uh, resource, resources consumption, consumption is. Um, listen, let me rephrase it. Um, with a better resources consumption, we can uh, consume less memory and we can avoid uh, memory swapping and if me in general if memory swapping happens it's a very big thing and i will i will tell in detail some more about this later why it's a very bad thing um, but in general we need to think of uh, memory consumption uh, most of the modern uh, software doesn't care about this uh, but we have laptops that that can boil water so day I think <clears throat> and uh, some very complex algorithm um, some uh, very complex uh, problems we can solve by um, limiting requirements like we cannot cover um, for instance we cannot cover uh, cats uh, for the for our laser application because it's a little bit different task for the uh, machine learning. Basically, the model should be extended, but we introduce certain limitations on the human beings. So we solve it. Um, yeah, and concurrency. Um, like Google uses a lot of concurrency when you do search on uh, Google Maps. Uh, it, um, it involves concurrency uh, queries. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's good. Um, reference numbers, uh, this is something to remember, not exactly, of course, um, uh, the, uh, the, um, the great man, um, Einstein said once that you don't have to memorize, uh, specific things when you can look, look at them. So of course, don't look up them. Uh, don't 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 memorize them. Um, but uh, let me see if I can if I can highlight something. 
Let's just, let's just, uh, if I can highlight. Uh -huh. So level one cache reference branch mispredict level two cache reference. It's all about the uh, CPU level. Uh, this is something we don't manage. Uh, and it can be managed uh, with uh, low level uh, programming languages. Uh, mutex lock and lock, we cannot manage uh, how long it takes to work, but we can manage uh, how often we uh, uh, acquire mutexes and how, um, how, how, um, how many critical sections we have. Um, basically defining the number of mutexes. Uh, main memory reference, it's again CPU level, uh, not CPU level, but CPU around level, and we don't manage it. Um, but it's important to understand that uh, large chunks of memory, uh, if you want to access them, if you want to store like one gigabyte or even 100 megabyte array in the, uh, in JavaScript, uh, it's not going to be something good. <coughs> um, compress one kilobytes uh, with Zippy. That's basically something that's related to algorithms. So with uh, uh, good algorithms, we can get low latency numbers. So this is to understand uh, send one key uh, bytes uh, over one gigabit network. This is something we can manage uh, by proximity and by bandwidth, by controlling bandwidth of network and with 4K uh, randomly from a SSD. Um, this is something we also can manage uh, using algorithms, the way we read data from uh, storage. And if you, if you try to minimize uh, the, uh, uh, the number of accesses, the number of read and write uh, operations to SSD, you can obviously minimize the time you spend with uh, working with uh, SSD, waiting for SSD to reply. Uh, so for instance, it's, um, it's very related to uh, databases uh, when instead of a full scan, it's when you basically read the whole table. Instead of it, you exploit indexes that will allow you to traverse through the uh, binary tree uh, uh, to find the appropriate key. And by this key, you have allowed one record from the uh, table. So you don't have to read the whole table to find this key. <clears throat> uh, read one megabyte sequentially. That's what I also, that's what I mentioned by uh, storing 100 megabytes or uh, uh, one gigabyte of uh, object in uh, garbage collected uh, memory. Um, this is uh, very optimistic, uh, tw uh, uh, 250 uh, milliseconds, mi microseconds, uh, because with uh, garbage collection, uh, the uh, memory layout is more complex. <clears throat> uh, run trip, uh, network latency, manageable uh, sequentially. Um, let me see. Yeah, basically, uh, that's what I mentioned about this is the, Disk seek, uh, it means the um, H, uh, HDD disk, um, mechanical disk. Uh, we don't really use them anymore, so we don't care. Uh, this is from mechanical disk, uh, sequentially, yeah, and send packet. Mason, this is for you. <laughs> this is the latency between. Uh, California and Netherlands, uh, 150 milliseconds. Uh, and with China, I have even more. <laughs> um, 
unmanageable latency. Yeah, let's cover un unmanageable latency um, quickly. Uh, so basically, uh, it consists of a CPU, RAM, and I/O. That uh, those parts that we cannot manage. Um, so for instance, um, CPU, how works CPU? Uh, you can imagine a, a large conveyor uh, at the very beginning, uh, where at the very beginning uh, there are people who are putting boxes on it. Uh, there are other people that open boxes and uh, look what's inside and then leave instructions how to execute, how to properly handle them. Then other people read these instructions and execute them. And then another stage uh, is uh, writing back. It means uh, if uh, your instruction produce side effect, like if it's uh, multiplication, the result of multiplication, you should start it back to the some register. So you you put something in the box again, and then it goes further on the conveyor uh, until it reaches something. <laughs> um, so it takes time. It's not it's not happens immediately. Um, <clears throat> And every uh, ROM access, it goes through the uh, the bus. And the bus also has frequency on multiple channels. Uh, it also can be um, locked by one of the processes. Uh, for instance, when you do uh, atomic operations. Um, <clears throat> yes, and uh, IO handlers, um, that's not much we observe frequently, but when you do a lot of uh, uh, operations, uh, IO operations, uh, you you make kernel to spend time on handling IRQ and uh, interrupt. Uh, interrupt is the uh, special kind of events uh, uh, that happens on every read operation, on every write operation. Uh, when something comes through the device, through the hardware device. Um, yeah. So you might be uh, wondering why would this, this sort of things uh, matter, but uh, in PostgreSQL, uh, there is a special uh, there was a commit made on 2015 that basically uh, tells us what I just told. Uh, it uh, controls the memory layout. Um, it aligns with 64 bytes and it improves performance uh, significantly. And so if we follow the uh, discussion, uh, you can see uh, if I find plus, uh -huh. uh, this solves this degradation. So it's quite three times degradation um, in uh, after run of the CPUs. <coughs> and in Ethereum, uh, slightly related. Uh, for instance, um, they have a special field, uh, validated flags, which uh, reaches uh, eight bits. And instead of using bit vector, which is dynamic, uh, they switch to using uh, int eight. It's basically a fixed, uh, fixed uh, size integer. Uh, which takes on the uh, 8 bit. And it's way faster to work with this and way simpler than with this uh, dynamic uh, bit vector. Um, <coughs> so let's go further on uh, some read materials. Um, this is a very long paper, uh, CPU memory. Whatever programming I should know about memory. I never finished it, I have to admit. But if somebody finished it, 
I will be proud. Um, uh, this is uh, from a super, uh, super nice guy, um, Herb Sutter. I think the name. Yes. Yes, that's a uh, Herb Sutter. He basically explains what uh, what modern programming languages hide from uh, developers. Uh, this is an Intel reference uh, for optimization. This uh, explains everything in uh, in very details. Uh, so if you want to read it, and this is a very good source of information about optimization. And this is a very nice uh, reply on Stack Overflow about uh, cache friendly code. Okay, we finished with non manageable latency. Uh, I hope it wasn't boring. Um, manageable latency, something we can manage. <clears throat> so sometimes uh, to improve uh, the uh, the response time of a service, uh, we can scale it vertically, or to make limits higher for uh, Kubernetes container, for instance. Um, <clears throat> so obviously more gigahertz, uh, more gigabytes, and faster kind of public storage, MD2. Um, doesn't always help because you need to understand bottlenecks. And also you need to understand if it's a uh, block contention or memory or uh, resource usage. Um, uh, the best way to scale is horizontally when you add more um, nodes. Uh, but you shouldn't uh, forget about the complexity of communications. Uh, it means that if every node talks with each other, it's a quadratic complexity. Really. And it will introduce a lot of uh, network it uh, iterations, which would overuse your network bandwidth, basically. Uh, this is something we fight in the peer-to-peer uh, -peer world. And in Ethereum uh, network, for instance, uh, when you have thousands of nodes, it doesn't mean that they talk to each other. They talk to only a subset of them. Um, yes, and this is something way easier to do. You basically add now, uh, register it somewhere, and then you use it. <clears throat> but you also have to manage your state. So uh, if something, if there is a shared state, you would have to um, separate it, move it out to the database, to the uh, shared storage or something like that. There are other problems involved with it. Um, Algorithms. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, for instance, to improve rendering time, um, uh, to improve uh, response times, which would involve inside of handling your query some kind of logic uh, that implements an uh, algorithm, uh, you can always design better algorithms. Maybe not always, but you can certainly try uh, to avoid excessive complexity and resource consumption. Um, these are um, kinds of complexity to remind. There is a constant complexity, uh, logarithm complexity, <clears throat> linear uh, and log n. Uh, it's basically sorting algorithms and square uh, and key. And this is kind of very bad complexity, and I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> and the exclamation mark, basically. Uh, you can learn, um, there is a very good course about uh, algorithms, uh, this from Tim. He's from Stanford, and he covers a lot of um, different kinds of algorithms, dynamic programming, greedy, uh, graphs, uh, hash table, you will have to implement your hash table and it's very interesting uh, sorting 
randomized algorithms. This is a very weird kind of algorithms, and I hate it. And there, he also speaks about MP completeness. I also hate it. Um, so I'm practiced. There is a beautiful website, um, Hacker Rank. Please use and don't just solve uh, very simple uh, tasks, uh, very simple problems. <clears throat> Prefer medium or higher complexity. Um, yeah, this is uh, about memory swap. So technically, it calls major page fault. So if you know the comment uh, time, uh, if you call it time dash v, it will print your number of page faults. There will be minor page faults, and there will be major page faults, and it will show you if your process swapped, it will be more than zero, basically. And the main problem with this, uh, it means there is no more space in a fast uh, place for your uh, for your objects and so on. And the uh, how the how the swapping works. So uh, the whole memory is divided into the, into pages, and when you run out of uh, physical memory, one page gets uh, loaded, get, gets, gets unloaded on the disk and saved. And then the free space will be fulfilled by the other process. But <clears throat> you can have competing processes and they will be trying to, uh, to load and unload the same subset of pages. And, this creates um, quite the competition and they will basically will be waiting for each other um there is a, a memory, out of memory killer uh, or um, killer in uh, latent so kind of prevents from this to happen but we saw examples with prison uh with its early versions uh, it could take all memory, continue swapping, and go like one time doesn't give back the memory impression. <clears throat> doesn't give back, it. well. Uh, uh, yeah, so to better understand latency, uh, don't, don't be afraid going into the bits. Um, don't don't be afraid learning what's happening under the hood. So, for instance, um, how browsers work. Uh, this is so basically um, like what's what's bad in this situation that the browser, it's the millions uh, lines of code uh, in written in C++, and nobody basically basically it becomes a black box for most of us. Um, but this uh, very good article that covers what's happening uh, under the hood. So basically the parser, uh, the um, render tree construction, and so on. Um, how DNS work. So you will better understand why like the initial page load can be slow and some queries can be slow at the first time. Um, <clears throat> oh, TCP works. Uh, it's a very uh, interesting and very hairy topic uh, how TCP works. Um, it's better if I cover uh, if I cover, uh, where is this, where is this, come on, I need you, yes, this diagram, so there are, so basically on, on TCP, it's, uh, uh, it's a communications 
that happens with the packages. Um, and every package has flags, uh, special flags. And to establish connection, it uses a um, scene, um, acknowledge, and fin. And this is a kind of three-way handshake. Uh, that's they call it. Uh, basically, you first uh, send sim, then you wait uh, send SK. <clears throat> and if you received it, uh, you send SK on the other side. I understand that the connection has happened. Um, so if you sometimes see uh, that you're trying to establish TCP connection with some service and it doesn't reply, you're query your connection is stuck. But basically, uh, the server doesn't reply in ICK. Um, this is a very, it's a special kind of uh, handling in firewalls, it calls a uh, black hole. So basically, uh, doesn't, it doesn't reply anything on, uh, on common uh, connections. Um, and it's kind of bad for the client side because the uh, the operating system has uh, uh, all kinds of uh, many kinds of tables that are limited, and if you make uh, like thousands of such, um, if you try to initiate thousands of such connections, they will stuck with some timeout, and that timeout is um, this is for Jake. <laughs> This timeout is uh, configured by CCTL, and uh, this is sometimes helpful. <clears throat> yes, uh, the other the other thing is quite is quite understandable. It doesn't really matter. Um, what's important to also know that on every on every data package, the uh, other side should reply with acknowledgement. And it can happen synchronously or asynchronously. And so, yeah, um, I, I, I mentioned it later, but I will tell it here. Uh, so, for instance, if you communicate between China and California, or maybe Toronto, you will have to write the data package and then, uh, then wait for the Acknowledgement, and since the latency is very high, uh, therefore basically I uh, will be waiting for this communication to happen. And to improve this kind of stuff, uh, there is a TCP window size. Um, let me show uh, TCP window size. This basically tells that instead of sending um, four kilobytes uh, in one package, it's going to send, it's going to extend it and going to send one megabyte at once, for instance. And it's way faster than, you know, than exchanging the small packages. <clears throat> it's uh, very useful for cases when you stream something. Uh, and UDP, and there is a trend uh, in HTTP 2 and 3. Um, Google wants to move us to UDP. Uh, there are good articles that describe why it matters. Uh, I don't want to go into the details. Um, oops, I, I, I clicked something. Uh -huh. Okay. Safe on DNS, and there are a special kind of uh, meta tags, uh, meta tags, tags um, where you can control your DNS uh, prefetch uh, queries. And for instance, if you have, like, if your next query will be fonts just static or Google Maps or what do we use? We use something like Ethereum API. We can include this uh, tag, and this was this will save us some milliseconds. <clears throat> um, so 
again about uh, network latency. Uh, we can control uh, HTTP queries, their number, and the last queries you issue the last the last time you uh, you have to wait. Um, uh, you can control wait, so it means you don't have to query all all hundreds of megabytes of JSON. Uh, you can uh, introduce pagination and query with pagination. Uh, parallelization and concurrency. Um, so this guy, Rob Pike, it's a very old guy. He basically designed the Unix system. He covers what concurrency and parallelism, parallelism is are. <laughs> um, that's an interesting talk. Uh, so basically, parallelization, uh, yeah, uh, it means you can issue many queries at once. And concurrency, you can use query teams to handle the responses. <clears throat> Uh, yes, and HTTP to Debian, probably. Uh, it's something I learned when I was writing this presentation. <laughs> um, yes. A critical rendering path. Uh, I didn't know this, but it's very important thing that uh, that basically defines the latency when the browser received all HTML and CSS and JavaScript and renders into pixels. Uh, so this is very nice article. Um, it's not something new. It's uh, written by Mozilla.org, developer resource. Uh, uh, describes DOM, uh, CSS subject model. Uh, what it's all about. Um, um, it's quite a small clause about optimizing for CRP, but um, it covers basics of uh, optimization, but you can find more ways to optimize for uh, CRP uh, in Google, or you can basically, uh, if you understand what, what happens under the hood in the browser, you can uh, derive optimization techniques. Um, <clears throat> okay. Yes, pre-render whatever you can on services. It's not really applicable to uh, in our case because we host on uh, IPFS, and IPFS doesn't allow to run any logic on server side. So what we can do is uh, to use. Uh, What's it called? What do we use? <laughs> I forgot. Uh, Gatsby. Um, Gatsby means uh, to pre-render, uh, and we already used it uh, for the leaderboards. Uh, <clears throat> Optimize the set. Uh, there are some very weird cases like um, Jenny's uh, firewall. Uh, we had this case uh, when uh, when we had problems with our registration, uh, that was happening because JavaScript wasn't loading on time. And default submit handlers, they behaved weirdly. And this is something we had to prevent um, um, before we encounter Chinese firewall. Um, yes. Uh, this is basically about deploying components on, um, close to each other. Um, ideally, they should be in the same rock and they should be uh, connected directly with QSFP plus. Uh, please don't don't deploy them on different continents. <laughs> um, and streaming is a different story. So this is what I uh, mentioned before: uh, TCP windows uh, window. Size 